Hi everybody, I'm Zach Collins with Scorpion Racing Products and wanted to take a few minutes today to explain the difference between a 1.5 and 1.6 rocker arm, as well as what the differences are between the multiple ratios that we have available in our rocker series. All of our rocker arms have the ratio marked on the actual rocker body itself, so you'll know exactly what ratio it is. Um, for several different applications, there are a stock ratio, the ratio that's the same as what that engine came from the factory with. Uh, for a typical small block Chevy, that's a 1.5. Uh, for an LS1 Chevy, it's a 1.7. Uh, for a small block Ford, it's a 1.6. For a big block Chevy, it's a 1.7. For a big block Ford, it's a 1.73. Uh, so the rocker arm is just basically a reciprocating lever arm. So that ratio number is how much it's gonna multiply the camshaft lobe lift by. So the camshaft has a base circle, which is just a solid diameter, and then it's got a bump on it, which is actually part of the lobe. And the difference between the base circle diameter and how much off of that base circle the top of the lobe is, is how much lobe lift there's gonna be, how much it actually moves the lifter from the base circle of the cam when everything's fully seated and the valve's fully closed. So for example, if you have 500 thousandths of an inch or a half of an inch of lobe lift on your camshaft, a 1.5 ratio rocker arm is gonna open the valve 1.5 times that amount. So 1.5 times a half inch lobe lift would be 750 thousandths or three quarters of an inch. So for a 1.5 ratio rocker arm on a half inch lobe lift, your valve is actually gonna open into the cylinder three quarters of an inch. Uh, this is where you get a performance advantage over the stock ratio, you can actually run a higher than stock ratio with the same camshaft and get more valve lift. So the engine actually runs like there's a bigger camshaft in it. You also gain a few degrees of duration depending on how much you change the ratio as well uh, because the valve's actually gonna be open a little bit longer um, and it's gonna accelerate the valve quicker. So you've got the same window from opening to closing and instead of only going 750 thousandths, now you're going over 800 thousandths and then closed in that same span. So the valve's actually moving quicker as well. A couple things that you wanna watch out for and just double check when you do wanna run a higher than stock ratio and a ratio that's higher than what came with your cam card from your camshaft manufacturer is that you check a couple things for interference. Uh, you wanna make sure you check valve to piston clearance. Since that valve's gonna be opening down into the cylinder further, it's gonna get closer to the piston. So you wanna actually roll the engine over by hand. Uh, some people use clay. Uh, some people actually roll the engine to 10 degrees before before and after top dead center and check with a dial indicator how much the valve actually moves. Um, and there are set numbers and each engine builder and each manufacturer has their different preferences for how much valve to piston clearance is actually acceptable in that given application. Outside of that, you also wanna make sure your valve spring has enough travel in it before coil bind to be able to accept and accommodate the additional lift and the additional amount the valve is gonna open and that spring is gonna compress. Um, in addition to that, in the valve spring area, you wanna make sure that the bottom of your retainer and the top of your valve seal don't come in contact with one another either because if you are changing the ratio quite a bit, let's say from a 1.5 ratio to a 1.7 or 1.75 ratio, there's a lot more valve lift than what that setup was initially uh, set up for and you're actually gonna have to double check those clearances because if you actually have the retainer hit the seal, it's gonna knock the valve seal out, oil's gonna go down through the guides um, and that's all bad and then also the coil bind, you normally wanna have somewhere between 60 thousandths uh, minimum um, clearance in the spring before coil bind. Um, so you have to double check that number as well. Sometimes depending on your spring rate and the application, RPM range, how aggressive the camshaft is, you can get away with actually letting the spring have a larger installed height to accommodate that much more lift as long as you still get the pressures you need over the nose or open spring pressure to be able to keep the valve train under control at high RPM. Um, so the main difference between any rocker with a different number on it, whether it's a 1.5, 1.6, 1.65, 1.7, 1.73, 1.8, is the ratio, which just means how much and how many times it multiplies the camshaft lobe lift by. We have more information about this available on our website at www.scorpionracingproducts.com, or you can also always call our tech line and ask us and we'll be glad to help you. 352-512-0800, thank you.